Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanisms in Die in the Dungeon. Now, there are two games with this name. I'm not talking about the tabletop version. I'm talking about the Flash digital version that looks like this. Um, I'll post a link in the uh, in the description below. So basically, this is a um, a bag building roguelite game, kind of like Slay the Spire, a little bit like Slay the Spire, but with dice instead of cards. And there's a really clever spatial element to it. On your turn. Uh, you are drawing three dice from your bag and deciding where you want to place them on this on this chart here. Actually, you have you're drawing five dice from your bag. You're you're placing three, uh, so you can see the leftover dice down here, and you're placing them on this on this little grid here. You place a die, you place all three dice, and then you click finish, and then you deal damage to one of the monsters over here. So that's the basic idea of the game, and the amount of damage you deal is based on a couple different factors here. So for example, I have a red die. Uh, red is a damage die, so I'm inherently going to deal two damage to one of these monsters. However, these purple dice increase the pips on other dice that are within exactly range two, because the number here says two, by plus two. So this, this red die is within range two of this purple die, so it gets plus two. And this red die is within range two diagonally, also works, of this die, so it also gets plus two. So this red die is dealing six instead of just two, which is enough to kill one of these monsters. And if you don't kill all the monsters that are there, they deal damage to you. Whenever you finish off all the monsters, you, similar to other, like Slay the Spire, similar to games like that, you gain one of three different benefits. You can add a new die um, to, your, to your bag usually a better die. You can upgrade one of your, your existing dice. I think there's one other option too, but those are the main two. You're upgrading a, a die or you are um, adding a new, a new die to your collection, a slightly better die. And so that sense of progress feels really good. But even just the core mechanism itself feels really good. Just having a bunch of dice in a bag, rolling those dice, they have all started with pretty low pips and then uh, placing them in the spatial puzzle. The spatial puzzle is great. Um, I, I really, really like this spatial puzzle. And one of the biggest reasons I was, I was realizing, well, I was trying to think of why do I really like this so much? Because the puzzle's nice, it's fun, like which dice do you choose? Where do you put them? How do you boost them? Are you defending? Are you healing? What, what are you focusing on this turn? But I think one of the reasons that I really, really like it is that you are not acting on the behalf of the monsters ever. Um, you don't have to roll for them. You don't have to do something for them. And I think that's one of the things that often, for me, bogs down games where I'm playing against an AI that is actively hurting me. Even in simple games, like the most classic, I think, version of this is Pandemic. In Pandemic, you have to draw cards to show what the AI is going to do to hurt you. In this game, you are never acting on behalf of the AI, even though there is a spatial puzzle to it. Um, you are only acting on your behalf, and then the monsters just do their thing really quick. And part of that probably is because it is a digital game. I think that helps a lot. You are not having to operate what they're doing. But I think even if this were a tabletop game, what they do is so quick and simple. There's nothing random about it. There's no spatial, you don't have to run any AI. You are just doing your thing, but with a spatial element. And maybe that, I think, is one of the reasons that this stands out. Because in a lot of dungeon crawl games, not only are you operating your characters in the dungeon crawl situation, but you are also operating with the other what the enemies are doing as well and here all of the spatial puzzle is for you it's 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 your stuff that you're you're getting you're doing and that feels really really good um, in addition to the simplicity of the the bag building the upgrading uh, adding more dice to your bag and uh and seeing which dice you roll and deciding where to place them. It all comes together just really, really well. So I'll, I'll post a link in the, in, in the comments below. It's very easy to play, very easy to learn. I would say the one drawback of, of the game, and the reason that I would love for there to be a tabletop version, um, is that it's very pixelated. I kind of like that look, but it's a little hard to read some of the text because the text as well, as well is also pixelated. But check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks.